an alien technological signal has been detected. Signs of an advanced civilization, talking, sharing data or transmitting information. Who are they? We don't know. Where are they? We do know. For over 20 years, this has been known about, but not shared outside the astronomical community. Why not? We are ready for confirmation, ready to hear. We are not alone. You want answers? So do I. So today, I hand you over to Simon, who begins to answer your questions. Hey, I'm back. A lot of you have actually asked me, is this real? Well, yes, peer-reviewed Nature article, Alien Techno Signature Verification Framework by Breakthrough Listen. It is real, they found something. So how do you find detail? That's what's being funded right now by the EU Horizon Fund. A big welcome, hi, to a whole bunch of new subscribers. Who am I? Well, I'm wearing my Adam Savage t-shirt because you never see Simon and Adam in the same room together, but no, I'm not Adam Savage. I'm a Brit, I'm actually Scottish, and I work for BBC Television all my life, and also for PBS and National Geographic, people like that, as a film editor. And I've also directed and produced films for NASA and even for the cinema. And my special hobby is the history of physics. This is a very interesting story. I've heard that a techno signature, what it is, you know, listening to technology from aliens that isn't coming from Earth, is a much smarter way of actually looking out there for aliens. I mean, are they going to say hi? No, probably not. But their daily life, like ours, you know, we transmit the I Love Lucy show, to what we did, and aliens by now, it's disseminated into the universe, <laughs> you know, and eventually aliens are going to pick it up and go, hmm, Desi Arnaz. <laughs> but excuse me for being flippant. It's just my character, okay? And hopefully you'll enjoy the things that I bring to you here in the future in YouTube. There's lots of very, very good subjects. A deep dive into UFOs, for example. So today I'm going to answer some of your questions and also verify what I'm saying is real by a peer-reviewed Nature article on the Breakthrough Listen project. Oh, by the way, this is really fun. I put out an interview request with a leading member of Breakthrough Listen. These are the people actually listening for the technological signature right now. I think the other thing I'd like to say is we live in 2024. Something amazing has happened with radio telescopes. You can now network them together to make the whole planet Earth into one giant radio telescope, multiplex signals. So there's radio telescopes in Europe, a new one has just been built in Africa, and we have the Square Kilometre Array, possibly the world's leading radio telescope in Australia. But we have something much more than that. We can now join all their signals together to make a giant ear to listen for an alien technological signal. And that's what the Horizon Project. The Horizon Project is the overall overarching funding from the EU to all science, I mean everything. But if you look at their budget, which I have for you, they're funding radio astronomy right now like there's no croissant in the word tomorrow. So let me get myself together and be serious for a minute and actually talk about this Nature article on how you could possibly look for an alien technological signature. There's a link in the description, but I'm just going to read it out because it's probably easier. Abstract. Abstract means just like the summary of the paper. It says, the aim of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which we know is called SETI, is to find technologically capable life beyond Earth. Yes, please. But a new approach is listening for alien techno signatures. I mean, are they using advanced physics to communicate? On the 29th of April 2019, that's a bit after they first heard it, the Breakthrough Listen SETI project at Parks Muriang Radio Telescope, that's in Australia, found data 
You see, this is very interesting wording. In a narrowband signal, also very interesting, narrowband signal that is consistent with a technological alien signature in the 982 megahertz BLC1 band. Where you would expect to hear something. Here in this paper, link in the description, we present how you would work out if it's real or if it's interference. You see, that's the point. I mean, it might be somebody in the comments said, are we actually listening to our signal being bounced back? Are the deep space Lagrange point satellites that are actually confusing the radio telescopes? There are now deep space probes. We have satellites in orbit around Mars. How do you think to get the data back from the Mars rovers? So here's their results. They say, we found in BLC1 a signal, and it's shown in figure one. This is a waterfall plot. And again, I'll put this up full screen so you who understand what a waterfall plot is, that's just time and frequency falling like a waterfall. But it shows detail graphically. The waterfall signal in this graphic represents many hours of observation, not just a snapshot. They go on to say, we first ensured that the telescope and back end logs showed normal operation. Good. We filtered out anything else in the 982 megahertz band, including aircraft. A signal from a distant planet, that's what we're saying, would be geographically unique to that location. So, for example, little green man here, and you're listening over here. Uh, and you're hearing it, shouldn't work. It's only when you point the beep, 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 point to him, do you hear something? If you're hearing it everywhere, it's probably a natural occurrence. Astronomically close to the target are two pulsars, and they had to eliminate those signals, which can be multi-spectrum, so I'm sure that was hard, but you could filter them out. Oh, this is good. Finally, we honed in on the signal and it was offset by 12.5 degrees from the nearest star. Oh, that's good. Star, planet. What we found were highly attenuated uh, low level signals at the expected drift rate. I'm drifting, right? Orbiting. And this is the night in question. On November 2020, we began our scheduled observation from Muriang, the radio telescope. They also eliminated LEO, uh, low Earth orbit satellites. I'll put this full screen again in their Nature article that were above the horizon at the time of the observations in 2020. And this I'm about to show you is what they found. Edit here for full frame. Are you noticing these striations, stripes? They're at a set rate. This is not a natural occurrence. And finally, looking at all the statistical probability they came up with this cut to full frame. What you're seeing here is a plot showing the population of lookalikes and mirrored lookalikes compared to the BLC1 start frequency we were searching for. High probability. So what's going to happen next? Well, they're not going to tell you. This is well known in the science community. Me and my science mates know that this is going on. I have a YouTube channel and I want everybody to know. But this is the proposal for Discovery Listen for the future. Our found source is still uniquely fascinating. It's a SETI search for extraterrestrial intelligence target for very good reasons. The search and the interpretation of this signal gives us unique challenges and will require a network of radio telescopes 
rather than one dish listening to it. And that, my good friends and new subscribers, is all I know for now. This article that I read out and published in Nature is now four years old. In 2024, the EU Horizon Fund has funded network radio telescopes, as I said, in Germany, in Africa, and now the enormous telescope in Australia. I'm hearing through the grapevine, they are focused on one SETI target. We need answers. I think this should go public, and they want more detail. The truth is out there.